beautiful people and welcome back to my channel. My name is Maggie Renee and I am a Juilliard trained opera singer. Ooh, so Jerry does very sweet things on our channel a lot of the times and is a super generous person and this is an example of it. Jerry has sponsored a song for Roscoe, which we are very, very grateful for. And that is this one, which is Deep Purple Child in Time, live in 1970. I'm very, very excited to see this. It's going to be quite cool because Roscoe recommended it and Roscoe typically likes cool things. So I'm very excited to see this. Yeah, we're going to look up Deep Purple because I've never seen Deep Purple before. But thank you so much to Jerry for sponsoring this video on behalf of Roscoe. Everybody type thank you to Jerry in the chats for sponsoring this video. Here we go. This is Deep Purple. Okay, Deep Purple are an English rock band formed in London in 1968. They are considered to be among the pioneers of heavy metal and modern hard rock, but their musical approach has changed over the years. Originally formed as a psychedelic rock and a progressive rock band, they have shifted over to a heavier sound with their album Deep Purple in Rock. Deep Purple, together with Led Zeppelin and ba Black Sabbath, have referred to the have been referred to as the unholy trinity of British hard rock and heavy metal, early to mid 70s. They were listed in the 1975 Guinness Book of World Records as the globe's loudest band for a 1972 concert at London's Rainbow Theatre, and have sold over 100 million albums worldwide. Deep Purple was ranked number 22 on P VH1's Greatest Artists of Hard Rock program, and a poll on radio station Planet Rock ranked them fifth among the most influential bands ever. The band received the Legend Award at 2008 Mu World Music Awards. Deep Purple, specifically Blackmore, Lord, Pace, Gillian, Glover, Cloverdale, Evans, and Hughes were introduced into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2016. Okay, so let's see what Roscoe wrote. Roscoe wrote Sweet Child in Time, Deep Purple, live on the British TV show, Doing Their Thing, 1970. A change in pace from the opening Cashmere with a lilting ballad with a sharp sting in its tail. Ian Gillen is the vocalist. Again, I will leave it to you to tell us what you think. Richie Blackmore on lead guitar, another of the extraordinary British guitars of this era, and rightly acclaimed as one of the best. Ditto Ian Pace on the drums, John Lord keyboards, and Roger Glover on bass. This is the framed MK2 lineup active from 1969 to 1973. Okay, we just looked up Deep Purple. Let's look up the lyrics. This is Sweet Child in Time. Sweet Child of Mine. Sorry, Sweet Child in Time. Sweet Child in Time, you'll see the line. Line that's drawn between the good and the bad. See the blind man shooting at the world. Bullets flying, ooh, taking toll. If you've been bad, oh lord, I bet you have. And you have not been hit, oh, by the flying lead. You'd better close your eyes. Ow, 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 ow. Bow your head, wait for the ricochet. Ooh, ah. I want to hear you sing. Ah, ooh, ah, ah. Sweet child in time, you see the line. Line that's drawn between the good and the bad. See the blind man shooting at the world. Bullets flying, mm, taking toll. If you've been bad, Lord, I bet you have. And you've been, and you've not been hit by flying lead. You'd better close your eyes, bow your head, wait for the ricochet. Wow, wow, wow. Ow, wow. Oh God. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh wow. 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 Okay. Deep Purple Child in Time live 1970. So let's do this guys. Thank you so much Jerry for sponsoring this reaction. Let's do it. <laughs> High note is a G5. Okay. Groovy. <laughs> yeah, I like the drummer's hair. Ooh, dissonances. Shooting at the world. Bullets flying. Oh, 
I was a little bit worried about his voice for like a second at the very beginning because he was like, and it was just like a little bit like, but then he went into his resonance space and I'm excited. Let's go back a little bit. Right here. The good and the bad. See the blind man. See the blind man. He is shooting at the world. Shooting at the world. <laughs> Coming at the camera. Wait for the ricochet. Ooh. I'm crying for you day and night. fascinating because he's singing the high notes like ooh, 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 ooh. it's fascinating because like it seems like like he could be creating that effect but it also seems like his vibrato is just slow um which isn't no normally necessarily a good thing but in this case it works because it fits the style so i'm kind of fascinated by it let's keep listening for you day and night. <laughs> nice mix. <laughs> he's going, okay, ready, ready. I like how he's closing his ear too to get the right sound. Ah! Ah! It's all in the mix, y'all. He's not having any kind of difficulty with this. As long as you keep it in the mix. Ah! That's very easy to do. and very, But like not easy for everybody. Obviously, you have to be a good singer to keep on pitch and like make the production sound good and like know what placement it is in. But I'm saying once you know all those things, it's very easy to do once you like learn that. It reminds me of like... You know how a mechanic will fix your car and like, you know, it could be like the easiest thing. You've heard this kind of a saying before, like the mechanic fixes the car and it takes him five minutes and then he charges you like $150. And you're like, why did that cost $150? You only spent five minutes on it. He's like, because it took me 40 years to learn how to do that in five minutes. Same thing with this. When I say it's easy, it's easy for people who are trained and who work on doing that for a very long time. But anyways, let's keep on watching. <laughs> Is that the sound coming out on my end or is that in the recording? That's in the actual thing, in the actual video itself. But that sounds really cool. He goes even higher. It's all the way up there. It's really, really cool. He does it really, really well, and it's very easy for him. Yeah. I love the drama. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> but nice shift there. tell you that whatever Roscoe chooses is going to be good? I told you. I told you. It's going to be good. And it is good. Oh my god. Okay. Let's... Oh my god. Would that be considered fingerstyle technique? The way that he's using his uh, left hand to go. You know what I mean? Is that fingerstyle? That's hard. Not a single one of these musicians is lacking. They are amazing. Vibrato is the most fascinating thing because I don't know where that's coming from. He's literally like, that's how I like teach vibrato. But then eventually you go to like the actual vibrato, which would be, and it speeds up. You know what I mean? This is very slow vibrato.
muffins. They really went for that at the very end. Oh my gosh, it almost like cut them out how fast, I mean, how loud they went. They were banging on everything. Oh my goodness gracious. Wow. Well, that was pretty epic. I really love the way that he sings. He's got a really unique vocal style and the way that he's singing is very smart. I like, I mean, it's interesting how he's keeping his earplug the entire time. You would think that he would want to like hear the environment around him, but he sounds great. And like for a recording purpose, I could see, I could understand why a singer would use a technique to specifically make sure that he is keeping everything, you know, sounding good and in pitch, but nice. Digging the digging the vibe, digging the instrumentalists, they're incredible. And digging the whole thing all together. Wow, I love that. Nice. Epic. Simmer says, so was any of what that man sang considered a falsetto? Also, I don't understand when a man is singing high notes, what makes it falsetto and not falsetto? So this is a good question. I'm not a man, so I can't really tell you for sure about falsetto, but from what I understand falsetto as, I don't really, I don't know, there's a lot of like men's voices that honestly line up perfectly with what I do too. So I don't really know if I fully believe in the concept of falsetto, maybe it's in some voice types or whatever. It might be just another vocal technique, but from what I understand, I think falsetto is what women call head voice, right? So, ah, ah, it's when the air is going through the chords. Um, so in this case, um, the ooze that he did, that was in falsetto versus the which was all in his mixed voice, which is different. And then falsetto is similar, like falsetto would be the same kind of thing, in my opinion, as the head voice. That's just how I've been seeing them. And because I'm a, not a man, I can't prove that differently. Um, but from what I hear and the way that they sing, they sound exactly the same when they're doing their falsetto versus when we're doing our head voice. And then the mixed voice is that snarly kind of sound that you hear. Um, and then his chest voice is when he goes down into his main range where he's like, uh, and you don't hear as much air coming through, if that makes sense. So hopefully that answers your question. Falsettos are full head voice, no mix. Exactly, exactly. Which is what women would just call head voice. Women and men, I feel like we all have the same voices. The only difference is that name falsetto came from somewhere. I'm not sure why or for what, like for what purpose. But I'm assuming from what I've learned, it's the same thing. The falsetto is the same thing as the head voice. Um, and then other than that, I've learned that basically the same thing can kind of be accomplished between those things. I was just curious because I've seen people react negatively to someone being labeled as singing in falsetto and I, under I don't understand why. It depends. If they're just singing in falsetto when they should be belting, that can be a turnoff sometimes because it's not strong enough and it kind of loses the appeal of a full belt. You know what I mean? So like if I'm singing like At Last by Etta James, At last my love has come along. You want to hear that meat. And sometimes people might just sing it in falsetto and be like, At last my love has come along. Which is still beautiful. That last part was chess, my bad. Which is still beautiful, but it's not as, you know, as meaty as some people expect it to be. And it isn't like fully sung. Um, same thing, it goes for belting, you know, and like, especially in the Broadway world, sometimes you can be criticized for using only falsetto, which is why everybody's trying to find that mixed belting quality. So instead of like, for you are mine at last. So there's that. Or for you are mine at last it's a similar kind of a thing but the first one's a full belt and the second one is a mix so it just depends on that kind of a thing that could be why they could say something about um head voice versus belting if they ever criticize somebody for singing in like falsetto head voice you don't normally hear of a baritone singing falsetto he can they absolutely can. I think any voice type can sing falsetto. It's just you have to learn how to do it properly. And a lot of them just won't know how to do it and won't access the right part of their of their voice. And then once you figure it out, it's great. I don't know if I would consider Dimash, for example, to be a tenor. I would think he's like kind of a baritone with an extension. But he, for example, also sings in falsetto, mixed, uh, you know, chest. I think everybody that sings well and has a really strong technique should be able to sing in all of the different kinds of vocal styles and techniques. Heck, if I can do subharmonics, they can do head voice. Some reactors describe some of Mitch's singing in pentatonics as falsetto, and some people got really snarly at them, and I didn't understand their reaction. They shouldn't get snarly. He does absolutely use falsetto. All of the singers that I love, like Mitch, Austin, um, even Jeff, Castellucci, like all of them use falsetto and mix and chest. They use all of the different parts of the voice. There's nothing wrong with using falsetto at all. There's also the whistle range, which we won't get into today, but that's the 
very high one. Austin can slip into falsetto and does in very in several songs. Mayday, for example. Yeah, all of them do. Jeff and Tim. Yeah, exactly. Jeff and Tim are basses, and they all go into head voice a lot, often, very often. But it's also because not everybody understands what falsetto is. You know what I mean? So, so falsetto is just head voice for a man. Yes, exactly. That's what I have learned it to be. All right. Thank you so much, Jerry, for sponsoring that video. That was epical, and I'm so glad that we got to do it. Lots of fun. Thank you, and I hope you liked it, Roscoe. Thank you for bringing it to the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, comment down below what you enjoyed and what you'd like to hear next, and subscribe to join my BEA beautiful family. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Maggie Renee Music so that you can join me on all of my adventures as a singer living in New York City, studying at Juilliard, and traveling the world, taking you on stage and backstage with me. If you would like to support this channel, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon where you can get exclusive perks and benefits. You can also hit the cute little blue join button to become a member of the Skittle Squad. Skittle Squad, let me hear you down below. Also, be sure to check out the links down below in my description so that you can see all the ways that you can follow me, connect with me, and support the channel. You can also go to maggierenee.com links to find all of the different places that you can visit, such as my Discord. Make sure you join the Discord because I'm a member of the Eyebrow Army, TikTok, Patreon, how to sponsor a reaction, my vocal course called How to Sing Better Instantly, and much, much more. Thank you all so much for watching, and I am sending you all so, 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 so much love. And I will see you in the next video. 